managing emotions in the time of coronavirus. I keep hearing people ask, why am I so tired? Why aren't I being more productive? I'm not doing anything. What's wrong with me? We're not on a holiday. The world hasn't stopped to give us a break. We are facing a global pandemic of a virus that we know very little about. Most of us have never in our lives experienced anything like this. We don't know who is going to die, how many people will die, how it will impact on our lives longer term and what the future is going to look like. And that is terrifying. When we are anxious and afraid, the alarm system goes off in our brains. Adrenaline and cortisol start charging around our bodies, our heart races, pumping oxygen to our muscles, so we're ready for action, to fight, or run, or freeze. And then, we have nowhere to go, nothing to fight. We're being bombarded with images of people in masks, empty streets, police officers patrolling, hospital beds, rows of coffins, accounts of young people dying, people with no underlying health conditions. Many of us are struggling to switch off. And so the anxiety and the panic mounts. It's anxiety provoking to not know if we'll run out of food, to keep our distance from others and to encounter other people's stress and anxiety online, on the streets, and in the supermarkets, to be faced with the risk of infection from something we cannot see. For many of us, the stress and anxiety we feel is added to by living in close proximity to other members of our family. We probably didn't realise how much time we spent doing things to regulate the stresses of everyday life. And now, for most of us, we are being forced to sit with our feelings, to, to face some of the emotions we may have been avoiding for so long. We're told that we don't have to go to war, we just have to sit on our sofas. What's so hard about that? It is hard. So many of the things that make us feel joyful and happy, that helped us feel better when we felt bad are not currently possible. Many of us are isolated from our friends and family and those connections we had with other people were so important for us to manage our feelings of distress and anxiety. We are told it could be worse, that it's not as bad as wartime, but at least during wartime we could be active, we could connect with other people, help and support each other. We weren't separated from our parents and grandparents. Many of us experience these surges of adrenaline and we want to be productive. We want to be like Scarlett Johansson in Jojo Rabbit or Clive Owen in Children of Men. But instead we find ourselves like this. Because the constant bombardment of anxiety and panic and stress is exhausting. And so we find ourselves crashing when we least expect it. This is normal. Because our bodies cannot sustain this level of fear and anxiety constantly. And so we often fluctuate between periods of hyperarousal and hypoarousal. An extremely heightened alert state and then crash. Everything has changed so suddenly and so dramatically that we are experiencing a huge sense of loss. For many of us, loss of our jobs, businesses, hobbies, contact with friends and family, loss of our freedom to travel, to choose how we spend our days, loss of our daily routines, our children's last weeks and months in school. Loss can result in a very profound grief response. And a grief response can result in a roller coaster of emotions. Denial, anger, depression, shock, 
confusion, irritability, helplessness. Anger is a common response to threat and loss. And sometimes, often without realising it, it is easier for us to feel angry, to express, than to, to express or reveal our vulnerability. We can lash out at those around us and defend against these underlying feelings of vulnerability. The things that in the past made us feel relaxed and happy are no longer guaranteed. As human beings, we thrive on human connection and a freedom to choose what brings us joy. We are faced with a huge change and huge changes require adjustment. Yet no one has told us how this should feel. Is it normal to feel so tired, so anxious, so angry? How do I find my new normal? How do I adjust my expectations to stop myself from drowning? There are some things that are important. Even when you're feeling overwhelmed and anxious, down and withdrawn, connection and communication with others is important. It's inevitable that other people are feeling similar to you, despite the social media posts and the intimidating homeschool schedules. We are all struggling with this. It's also important to remember that you can still find joy in the things you enjoyed previously, but you might have to make adjustments. Adjusting what you can do, adjusting your expectations of yourself and how you expect to feel. You might feel like shutting down and hiding away. Overwhelming emotions can do that, but it is likely to make you feel worse longer term. Connecting through a screen is better than not connecting at all. Walking in the woods for half an hour is better than not walking at all. Reading a page of a book, having a bath, listening to the birds in your garden. It's important to be guided by how you feel. If you feel like sitting on the sofa in front of the television in your pyjamas and letting your children do the same for the day, then this is okay. This is not a test of how well you can homeschool your children, how tidy your house is, whether or not you've redecorated the spare room or sorted out that cupboard under the stairs. This is not an enforced metamorphosis where someone is coming to evaluate how well you've done at the end. We are living through a global pandemic and the goal is to survive and to come out the other side as sane as humanly possible. So remember that this too shall pass. Life will not be like this forever. And you are more resilient than you think you are. And the most important thing is that you are kind to yourself. And that you also stop to recognise the kindness of others because situations like this often bring out the best in people too. Recognise and acknowledge how you feel with kindness and without judgement, whether that's scared or anxious, hopeless, frightened, sad, helpless or angry, and say that it's okay, it's understandable I feel like this, because this situation is utterly overwhelming. And everyone else feels like this too.